This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the third and the final lecture on Chapter 17 of the um, free lecture notes, where we're looking at the cost of capital. In the first lecture, uh, we looked at how to calculate the cost of equity. In the second lecture, the cost of debt. But I did say at the end of the last lecture, given uh, companies borrow from both sources, we need to work out the overall cost of capital to the company. And let me show you, first of all, uh, a very short one, example 9, and then a longer one, example 10. Example 9, JPLC is financed as follows. Equity, the five million one dollar shares quoted at two dollar fifty come div. There's a constant dividend of thirty two cents per share about to be paid. In addition, they've got an issue four million eight percent debentures quoted at ninety two, and there's tax at thirty percent. And we're asked to calculate the weighted average cost of capital to the company. Well, first of all, let's work out the cost of the two sources separately. So first of all, the cost of equity. Well, I may as well use the formula. Uh, D naught 1 plus G over P naught plus G. Well, D naught is the current dividend, 32 cents. G is the rate of growth which here is zero if it's a constant dividend. So one, D dot one plus G is 32, divided by P naught. Be careful, he rarely does this, but do remember P naught is the X div market value. And I did say earlier, market values in the exam are always X div unless you're told differently. And here it specifically says it's 250 Come div. Well, again, you'll remember from our earlier chapters, the come div value is always higher than the x div uh, by the dividend about to be paid. So if it's 250 come div, then they're about to pay 32 cents dividend. The x div value will be what? 218. Sorry, I'm working in cents, so 218 cents. Uh, G, of course, is zero. It's constant dividend, there's no growth. And so the cost of equity, 32 divided by 218, 14.68%. Uh, separately, what about the cost of debt? Well, here, a nice easy one, because there's no mention of any redemption. And if you're not told about a redemption, then always we assume it's irredeemable. And so the cost of the debt being irredeemable is simply the after-tax interest over the market value. Well, on $100 nominal, the coupon rate, the interest is $8 a year. Tax is 30%. So the net cost after, in, after tax is 70% of 8. On a market value of 92, gives a cost of debt six point oh nine percent and of course, I'm not surprised the cost of debt is lower. We dealt with this earlier. The cost of debt is going to be lower for two reasons. Firstly, investors will be happy with a lower return because there's less risk. We haven't worked out the return to investors. That would be 8 on 92, but it's less than 14. Uh, uh, debt investors are getting fixed interest each year. It's less risky than equity investors where their dividend is not certain and therefore you'd expect them to be happy with a lower return. The cost of debt will be even lower because it gets tax relief. Uh, 
dividends don't get tax relief. However, there we are, this company, part of its money is effectively costing it 14.68%. Part of it is costing it 6.09%. Well, we want an overall cost. We take a weighted average. And what we do is this. Equity debt. We know the costs of the two individually. We've just calculated them. Equity 14.68. Oops. Debt 6.09. We're going to take a weighted average. The weighting is the total market values of each. The total market value, x int, x div. Uh, what about equity? Equity, we've got 5 million shares. They're quoted at 250. Ah, it's a cumdiv value. We weight always by the x div, x interest values. So it's 250 cumdiv. X div, subtract the dividend about to be paid. So as we got before, the X div value would be 218. So what's the total market value of the equity borrowing? 5 million times 218 per share. The market value is 10.9 million. Uh, what about the debt borrowing? There's 4 million nominal value of debt. The market value is 92 for every 100, and it is exit. So the market value, 4 million, 92 for every 100 nominal, is 3.68 million. And so the total market value of the company, the total market value of all the borrowers, is 14.58 million. And we take a weighted average. And so uh, equity, 14.68. It's 10.9 million out of a total of 14.58. Debt, 6.09%. Uh, it's 3.68 out of total borrowing of 14.58. Multiply and add up. It gives us a weighted average. So check my arithmetic. 14.68 times 10.9 divided by 14.58 gives me 10.9. 74, no, 75. Uh, debt, 6.09 times 3.68 divided by 14.58. 1.537. The total, the weighted average, 10.975 plus 1.537. 12.51% to two decimal places. That 12.51% is the weighted average cost of capital. And the importance of it is as far as the exam is concerned, in any normal investment appraisal question, earlier we had, um, I can't remember which chapter it was, but we went through investment appraisal, we set up all the cash flows, we discounted at the cost of capital, but in those chapters we were given the cost of capital. Well, the rate we discount at is the weighted average cost of capital. And so there will be questions where investment appraisal, you're setting up the cash flows, but instead of actually giving you the cost of capital, this is section C, 
Instead of actually giving it you, he asks you to calculate the weighted average cost. And there we are. It's the cost of the two sources separately weighted by the total market values. Now there could be more sources, there could be two types of equity for example, there could be preference shares, same formula, it's just preference shares have a constant dividend, G is zero. Uh, there could be more than one source of debt, it doesn't matter, we calculate the cost of each source of finance separately, we weight them by the total market value of each source. Uh, don't panic about um, discounting at 12.51. Um, if you simply ask to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, do it to two decimal places, so 12.51. If he required you to do any discounting, he always expects you to use tables. You discount at the nearest whole percentage. So your workings would say 12.51, but of course it's slightly nearer 13. If you were required to discount, you'd use the tables, you'd use the discount at 13%. Now there is discussion needed around that as to why we use the weighted average cost of capital and so on. Uh, but that's the next chapter. But you must make sure you can calculate it. Example 9 was relatively easy because it was shares with a constant dividend and it was irredeemable debt. Example 10 the, brings in the extra bits, but we've already dealt with them. Um, in example 10, uh, the dividend, there's growth in dividends, they're growing at 8%. The debt, it's redeemable, and so we have to calculate the IRR. Now, although I'll go through it, I really do suggest you have a go at number 10 on your own. I've shown you how we get the cost of equity, how we get the cost of debt. I really would have a go on your own and then put them together and get the weighted average. And then watch the rest of this lecture. Anyway, whether you've had a go yourself or you haven't, let's do it. Cost of equity. Ten million shares could you three dollar twenty x div, a dividend of twenty cents per share has just been paid. Dividends are growing at eight percent per annum. So the normal formula D naught one plus G over P naught plus G. Uh, D naught current dividend twenty cents uh, times one plus G with eight percent, so one point zero eight over the market value, the x div value. 320 plus the rate of growth at 0 0.08, which gives me 20 times 1.08 divided by 320 plus 0 0.08. It's 0.1475 or 14.75%. Separately, what about the cost of debt? The debt is irredeemable, uh, sorry, is redeemable, so set up the after-tax flows and work out the internal rate of return. Well, on a nominal value of $100, the market value currently is $105. The interest each year, the coupon rate is 10%. There's tax though at 30%, so the net cost $7 a year. They're redeemable in six years, so it's one to six. In six years' time, we've got the redemption. Are they redeemable at a premium of 10%? So on $100 nominal, the redemption will be 110 
Is the internal rate of return? Two guesses approximate. So again, I'll do it at 10%. 105 is 105. Um, the annuity, six years at 10%, the factor is 4.355. The redemption, oh, I keep losing my tables. The redemption, uh, the ordinary present value factor for six years at 10% is 0.564. And so the present values. 7 times 4.355, 30.49, the redemption 110 times 0 0.564, 62.04, uh, and so the net present value minus 12.47. It's negative, uh, and so the internal rate of return must be somewhat lower than 10%. I'll do it at 5%. And so the six-year annuity at 5% is 5.076. Uh, the six year uh, ordinary factor of 5%, 0 0.746. So the present values, the interest seven times 5.076, 35.53. Uh, the redemption 110 times 0.746. 82.06, the net present value, 12.59. And so again, as always, the cost of debt is the internal rate of return. It's obviously more or less halfway between the two, but let's check. Same way as always. Um, at 5%, we've got 12.59 positive. At 10%, minus 12.47. Over a change of five percentages, the MPV falls from plus 12 to minus 12. In total, it falls by... 25.06. And so the internal rate of return, we know it's more than 5%. We need a, to get to zero, a fall of 12. We know 25 is 5%. So 12 is 12.59, 25.06 5 of 5%. which gives an internal rate of return of 7.51%. So, we've got the two. Uh, and again, although it's not really our problem, the cost of debt is substantially lower than the cost of equity. It's less risky to investors and the company gets tax relief. I say that's not really our problem, although if you ever did this and got the cost of debt to be higher than cost of equity, then I think it's pretty certain you've made an arithmetic mistake somewhere. Whatever. Uh, I got the two individually the weighted average cost of capital 
Uh, we know the cost of each of the two sources. Equity 14.75. Debt, 7.51. The weighting is by the total market values of each source of finance. And so, equity. There are 10 million shares. They're quoted at 320, and that is an exited value. So, in total, 32 million. Uh, the debt, the six million nominal, uh, they're quoted at 105 for every 100 nominal. And so the total market value of the debt, 6.3 million. And the total market value of the company, therefore, is 38.3 the weighted average weight by market values. So equity, 14.75 times 32 out of a total of 38.3. Uh, debt, 7.51. Market value, 6.3 out of a total of 38.3. Multiply and add, and let's see what we get. So 7.51 times 6.3 divided by 38.3. I get a total of 13.56%. There's the weighted average cost of capital. And as I said with example 9, if you were required to then appraise a project, to get the net present value of a project, strictly we should discount at 13.56 in the exam. Never ever show your workings, show it to two decimal places, but if you were required to use it for discounting, you discount at the nearest whole percent in paper F9. A later exams, maybe we'll do it at 30 classes, but discount here, you discount using the tables at 14%. All right, well, there's the arithmetic, and again, you are bound to have to calculate a weighted average cost of capital somewhere in the exam. I've said that normally that's the rate at which we will discount projects when deciding whether to accept or reject. However, we do need a bit of a discussion around it, you know, why do I discount at that rate? And when wouldn't we discount at that rate? But that's the next chapter, chapter 18, which is a very short chapter, but then introduces two theories that you're expected to be aware of.